Welcome to my weekly market roundup 29th March 2020. I am Sagar Nandi. I used to work in information technology mostly based in Singapore. Now I have retired. I am living in Thailand and swing trading stocks using the Q trading systems and techniques that I developed. You may watch this and other videos on my YouTube channel trading profitably and contact me using email id either info at saganandi.com or trading profitably at gmail.com i regularly share live stock analysis on my traders forum saganandi.com and also on my twitter handle saganandi all these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques that I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will analyze oil and gold and then look at the market and stocks using the Q360 degrees analysis techniques. A technique where you can align the forces from the market level sector industry level, fundamental level, as well as technical level with your trades, thereby giving you truly high probability, low risk trades. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I am beginning my analysis with the oil ETF USO. I am looking at it using my go to weekly daily at a glance template. I call it at a glance template because using this single template you can decide if there is a buying or shorting opportunity in only a few seconds. Oil is down a lot. It is oversold and you can see that from different Q indicators. The Q thrust in the weekly chart, the jump, both are at the lower extremes. It is also oversold shown by the stretch band indicator and it is at pendulum or price extreme low. The pressure band indicator is showing that it has dropped sharply with extreme bearish pressure for five successive weeks. This is so much down that this is not a time to short oil. At the same time, if you look at the daily chart and try to apply the unambiguous trade setups using their unambiguous checklists, you will see that none of the long trade setups are applicable right now. Therefore, it's a time neither to take a long nor to take a short in oil. Gold ETF GLD One week ago in the last market roundup, GLD was at this level. And at that time, I had suggested looking for a buying opportunity. If you followed that, you could take a long position somewhere in the middle of the sand candle and book profit the very next day. Now gold is consolidating sideways after this gap up open. If it can break out of this memory resistance line next week, then you may look for a long opportunity again 
that will be a breakout trade setup and your stop loss will be just below the low of this consolidation range. On the other hand, if gold declines next week, we will not have any shorting opportunity because the weekly backdrop candle color is remaining bullish. After the commodities, I continue with the market level analysis using the market ETFs, four market ETFs or the four market futures. In Q systems, we are always alerted by the headwind signals. In SPY, the bearish headwind had come at the very top and that helped me protect profit in the long positions and take a number of short trades. In the previous market roundup, I pointed out to the bullish headwind appearing in the SPY daily chart. The headwind signal appears at an extreme of a train. When this bullish headwind appeared, there was no headwind long trade setup. What I was to do, I was to protect profit at any short position that I might have. That would be helpful because price went up little bit from there. Now at the right edge, the weekly backdrop color is remaining bearish. In the daily chart, price went above this memory support line, automatically drawn smart trend line on Thursday, but on Friday, it closed below the memory support. Friday's candle color is still bullish. If next week price can go down, and the daily candle color turns magenta because the weekly color is already magenta. If the daily turns magenta, that will give a go with flow trend following short trade setup. As the ETF QQQ, this was the only ETF where the weekly memory trend line support was holding. That is true this week also, price closed well above the memory support line, though the backdrop candle color in the weekly chart is remaining bearish. Here also in the daily chart, if price goes down next week and gives a magenta color candle, that will signal a go with flow trend following shorting opportunity. One thing you may note that though price recovered somewhat, it recovered after precisely hitting the memory support line both in the daily as well as in the weekly chart. Though there was this recovery, the QOBV on balance volume could not turn positive this week. The QOBV closed in the red. That is not a bullish sign. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA. Here also the weekly backdrop color is remaining magenta. There was a bullish headwind in the daily chart few days ago. After that price recovered somewhat. On Friday it closed with a bearish shape candle. If next week price can go down, this may also give a go with flow short trading opportunity. Russell 2000 ETF IWM This also displayed a bullish headwind possible reversal signal a few days ago. I mentioned about this in the previous market roundup. My action was to protect profit in any short position. After that price went up somewhat and on Friday closed with a bearish shape candle. The weekly backdrop color is magenta. Therefore, if daily falls from here, that may give a go with flow shorting opportunity next week. 
that completes my market level analysis time to make a call on the market outlook one week ago several of the market ETFs in fact three of them SPY DIA and IWM displayed the bullish headwind possible reversal signal that seems to have played out price recovered somewhat however on Friday the ETFs closed with a bearish shape candle the weekly backdrop color is remaining bearish magenta there is no long opportunity now as of Friday's close there is no shorting opportunity also however if next week price starts to go down the daily flow candle color will turn magenta and that may signal go with flow short opportunity in multiple market ETFs if that happens the bearish trading opportunities will come not only in the market ETFs but in many individual stocks as well therefore I am keeping my market outlook to bearish this week there is no long opportunity and if I am looking for any trading opportunity next week that is likely to be more on the bearish side after the market level let me have a look at the one month sector performance the red bars represent this week's performance green bars previous week's performance and blue bars two weeks performance before that this week all the sectors went up by significant percentages energy went up by almost three percent and the best performer consumer discretionary went up by more than 17 percent these are significant gains one week ago you can see all the sectors were down that is shown by the green bars they were down by even bigger percentages and two weeks prior to that the blue bars were also down by significant percentages that is why even though this week the sectors went up that didn't turn the downtrend of the market to uptrend they are remaining in downtrend and the weekly backdrop candle color is remaining magenta as I mentioned the bullish headwind that appeared in multiple market ETF seems to have played out they appeared and after that the market went up for the week and then on Friday the market ETFs displayed bearish shape candles and the sectors declined let's have a look at Friday sector performance this is one week sector performance and the magenta bars represent Friday's performance on Friday only one sector went up that was utilities and that too went up by a very small percentage 0.24 percentage and 10 sectors went down they went down by much bigger percentages the magenta bars we can have a look at the percentage declines on Friday from the sector percentage tab energy went down by 7.6 percent that was Friday's worst performer and utilities went up by small percentages consumer staples the second best performer went down by minus 1.9 percent Friday the market started to turn down again that is visible from the market ETFs and that is even more obvious from the sector percentage that is why I am more inclined to take short trades next week provided I have a proper Q trade setup 
let's spend a few more minutes on the sector and industry performance over five days over five days the sectors went up some went up a lot and if we look at the industry percentage tab five days performance many industries went up by even more than 20 percent why am i still not looking for long opportunities in this system that I'm using QH, I can highlight the industries I'm interested in and drill down to stocks of all those industries. These are the industries which went up by at least 20% last week. And these are the stocks in all those industries. If I find out the best performing stocks in these industries, some went up by very large percentages, even more than 90%. You can see many stocks went up by very large percentages. Still, I am not looking for buying opportunities. Why? Because you can see the video recording of my live market meet that I conducted on Friday. There, I looked at several of those stocks that went up significantly and they all belong to the best performing industries. And I showed that none of those stocks were giving valid Q long trade setup. When the best performing stocks in the best performing industries don't give a valid Q trade setup, that is not a time to buy stocks. I will not go through those stocks again. If you have not watched it, you may watch the live market meet video of last Friday where I went through the best performing stocks and analyzed them. Another thing that I did in the live market meet was to run this QSonar scan program. I ran it using Metastock Explorer in Q Global. This scan looks for stocks that are at memory trend line support and I had run it on the weekly interval. I ran it on a list of stocks that have liquid options. I have this list with 196 stocks. What was I trying to do? I was trying to look for stocks that are at long-term support, weekly support. And then if the market goes up, I was going to look for a buying opportunity. It is a way of prospecting stocks and getting ready. When I ran that, I got a number of stocks. at and was one of them. Let's open AT&T. On Friday also, I showed that though the scan identified AT&T as a stock having a weekly memory support, when I opened the stock AT&T with the at a glance weekly daily chart, the weekly didn't display any memory trend line support. Why? I mentioned the reason in that video, that live webinar, the reason was that when I am opening the stock here using the default weekly daily template, I am not loading enough data. How much data? If I go back to the explorer, when I am running the explorer i am running it with 1500 weekly bars that is a lot of data 1500 weekly bars if we assume one week has 50 weeks of data then i was calculating trend line supports that go as far back as 1500 by 50 30 years. 30 years. That's a long time, isn't it? That is the power of the 
give scans, especially the scans that sometimes look for very long term data like the memory trend lines. I would venture to say that it is impossible to draw trend lines effectively that go as far back as 30 years manually. Whereas the Q scans can automatically calculate all those long term supports and find which stock is at such support. Those long-term supports often tend to be very robust and therefore give low-risk buying opportunities, mostly well ahead of others. How can I see the weekly memory trend line support then? Let's try to look at them in trade station QLA. Let's get the data for at &T. Change the template to backdrop template that has the default weekly interval. This is ATNT with weekly interval. We still cannot see the memory trend line support, and this is what we saw in the Friday's live webinar also. How to see the weekly memory support coming from far back away? Let's go to data, edit symbol, and instead of loading only 10 years data, let's load a lot of data. Let's load how many bars, weekly bars, 1500, the exact number that was used by the scans. Once I update, immediately the memory support appears that is coming from really, really far, far away. They tend to provide robust support. And if you ran the scan in a timely manner, you could buy AT&T at this point. When it went below the support and reversed at that point, you could use a stop buy order to buy the stock, putting stop just below the recent low. And you can see by the Friday, by last week, it had gone up enough to cover more than the risk distance, giving you a profitable swing trade. You could see the memory trend line in Q Global Metastock also. Let's focus on the weekly chart and to simplify, I am going to delete some of the other indicators. Now it is using the weekly interval shown here. Metastock allows me to quickly change the interval to monthly. Let me do that. Now I am looking at the same stock using monthly interval at &T, and you can see the memory trend line support coming from many years ago. In fact, this trend line is being drawn from somewhere in 2008. That is the power of Q scans. It can look at a lot of data that is not possible to do manually and indicate to you when a stock has hit a possible support. Let me summarize. I am keeping my market outlook to be bearish. One week ago, three of the market ETFs displayed bullish headwind, possible reversal signal, and QQQ was holding memory trend line support. Those pointed to a possible recovery, and that recovery happened. This week, all the market ETFs went up, all the sectors went up significantly. However, the move seems to have played out at least for now. On Friday, all the market ETFs ended with bearish shape candle, and all the sectors declined barring utilities, which is a defensive sector, and utilities also went up by a fractional percentage. Also, the market ETFs are maintaining bearish backdrop color. Not only that, when I looked at the best performing stocks in the best performing industries for the week, 
I didn't find any Q long trade setup. And when that happens, it tells me that time is not right to buy stocks yet. Instead, if the market goes down again, then you may find lot of shorting opportunities. The market ETFs themselves may give go with flow shorting opportunities. And when that happens, many of the stocks will also give either go with flow or breakout shorting opportunities or maybe shorting opportunities using the other Q trade setups. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next weekly market roundup session and also the YouTube live sessions that I am conducting live market meetups. Thank you once again. Have a great week and trade profitably.